please, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, this is Bruce, G4ABX, and I'm going to continue a bit of the investigation I've been doing into the use of the Pi, the 0W and the 02W. Uh, this is the uh, 02W that uh, I've already done a video on. Uh, this is the original chap, uh, the, the Pi Zero. Uh, works fine, except <laughs> it, it's not really got enough puff with a single core for the usage that I want to put it to uh, running inside the Go box to give me digital audio, um, digital radio capability. So I've been on the lookout for some ways to um, essentially connect the 2W to my Go box. Uh, my Go box has got a KX3. Uh, the KX3, unlike the IC705, does not have internal sound card or uh, control of the uh, frequency, cat control. So in order to do that with the KX3, uh, you need to apply um, a serial to USB lead and you need to apply some sort of audio card. Uh, in terms of audio cards, I, I have been looking and I, I found this chap. Uh, now this is quite an interesting little audio card. Uh, you'll notice it's got the uh, GPIO header to fit the Raspberry Pi. It'll actually fit any of the Raspberry Pis, this one. But it might do the job for me. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, this is going to be the subject of my this week's investigations into the vagaries of Raspberry Pi and stuff. Uh, this one's quite interesting. It's it's not a very expensive thing. It's it, I don't know 14 UK pounds, something like that. Um, available from Amazon and lots of other people. Uh, it it has a couple of inbuilt microphones, which I probably won't need. Uh, it, it has here, it says, a headset connector. So that might be input and output, with a bit of luck. It, it has a single speaker output connection. It has uh, some GPIO connections uh, and has an I squared C bus output, but I shan't be using that. It's got a couple of LEDs on it and a button that you can use, uh, you can configure its usage. Very simple, uh, but to use this with the uh, Raspberry Pi 2W, this chap, uh, which is just connected to the power at the moment. I haven't got the display connected, but I'm reluctant to pull the connector out um, because it was so poorly, it was so badly damaged when I got it. Never mind. So I may have to fix a header on here. Um, by the way, I'm using the anti-static wrist app and the and the mat, uh, so it doesn't matter if I go touching bits and pieces of the uh, electronics. Although once it's powered up, it's all pretty low impedance anyway, so static shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but I'll have to fit a header here. There is a header fitted on the uh, the Pi Zero. So what I might do is use the Pi Zero for testing uh, to see whether I can configure this audio card. Uh, because if I can't, can't configure this one, then I'll I'll have to uh, I'll have to find something else. Uh, and in terms of finding something else, uh, here's something a little bit strange. I've got a USB hat here. Well, actually, it, 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 uh, it's really a, a USB bottom for the Pi. Uh, it works extremely well with the Pi Zero. Gives me one, two, three, four uh, USB, uh, standard USB 2 outputs uh, and a, a, a micro USB on there as well. Uh, it just clamps together and it uses uh, what are called pogo pins. These are gold-plated spring-loaded connections and these make contact with specific pads on the bottom of the Pi, in fact, uh, in fact up here, uh, and enable you therefore not to have to solder wires or use plugs and sockets, so it's, it's very convenient. Uh, as you can perhaps see, the, uh, the digital um, pins will line up with those two connectors and we'll get a line up for power with this one and this one here. Now for some reason, yet to be understood uh, and more investigation needed, this little device won't work with this Pi, the Pi 2W. So I'm not sure why. Um, it looks like the connectors all line up in the same place, but they clearly don't. Uh, one of them is, is, is not accurately lined up. So 
I'll have to do a bit of investigation. I, I may have to find a different version of this fella. Uh, I think there are a few versions available, but this is supposed to work um, well with uh, all of these uh, Pi Zeros, but it didn't work with that one. So I've been looking for an alternative, uh, an interim alternative perhaps, and I came across this uh, Suyama, uh, and it is a USB splitter. So this isn't exactly an unboxing, but <laughs> it's an unbagging, shall we say. Um, let's have a look at this. So, ah, okay, okay, fine. So this has got four um, USB 2 sockets and a micro USB plug, uh, which with a bit of luck we'll simply insert into the Pi around about there. There we go. So that's now connected the USB hub to the Pi. Um, and what I shall do shortly is uh, I'll bring the Go Box uh, onto the workbench and we'll have a go at plugging up the Go Box because that's where this is destined for. We'll have a go at plugging it up and seeing whether I can get the Go Box to work with, with its external leads and connections at the moment and um, as a prelim really to beginning to install this inside. It would be much more convenient if I can find one of these rather than this thing. Um, a, I only need two sockets. I, I could always chop them off. Um, it takes up a bit more space, this one, uh, than that would do. And, and I could plug the uh, USB dongles directly into these, um, which I can do with this, but um, it's, it's more wires to get rid of inside the Go Box. So I'll just uh, pause for a moment while I go and get the, uh, the Go Box. One moment. Right, I'm back, and here is the Go Box. I've connected the Go Box up to the um, <laughs> audio card, which is this fellow here, and also to the cat control via this USB connection here. Uh, you can see from the horrid mess of wires why I actually like a Go Box, so everything is inside. Right, let's turn on the rig and uh, check that we can actually get stuff working. OK, so, receiving OK, we're on 40 metres, uh, FT8, uh, plenty of volts. So we have the USB, we have this little USB hub uh, plugged into the uh, 02W. Um, it would be nice if I could get this fella to work. But uh, that's, I think, a task for another day. Right then, let's have a look and see how, see how this works. Okay, right, so there we go, Build-A-Pi. So Build-A-Pi is the application, a set of scripts really, uh, that Jason KM4ACK um, has put together for the amateur fraternity. And he's done really an absolutely fantastic job. Um, Without that, I probably wouldn't be using uh, Raspberry Pis. Um, but uh, let's now have a look and see whether we can get everything to run. So FL Rig is the application that I use for controlling the Pi. As you can see, it's, uh, it's come up there very quickly. No problem at all. It gives you remote control of things like um, volume <laughs> and a few other bits and pieces here. Uh, attenuators and preamps and things of that nature. But uh, we'll just leave it where it is for now, and let's see if I can get the uh, WSJTX application to run. Now this wouldn't run on the Pi Zero, so I'm hoping it runs fine on the 2W. It certainly did on the... here we go. Um, I'll get rid of the audio uh, waterfall. It's not really necessary and uh, just takes more resources. So with a bit of luck and a following wind, uh, we should shortly see some... Uh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, so we have a station in Greece. Let's try and give him a call. See if he comes back to us. So transmitting now. We're only running 5 watts, um, as, you can, as you can see. And we'll see whether he comes back. Fingers crossed. It usually takes a couple of goes because uh, you don't know when in the receive sequence you've actually transmitted. So don't be afraid. Oh, somebody else has come back to him. Never mind. That's uh, 
that's the luck of the draw. Okay, so back to the go box. Let's turn it down. So that, that's a success. So at worst, I could use that inside the go box. But what I really want to do is to find out why this fella isn't working. Um, I suspect it may be a simpler problem as the registration of these pins, because they're not very large and the pads on the back of the board are not that large and there's a fair amount of float in these fixings, both the fixings on this board and the fixings on the pie. So I'm hopeful that if I loosen everything else and jiggle it about a bit we might be able to get some continuity that will enable me to get the thing working. But that's for another day, that's not for now. Oh, looks like the uh, batteries are on the way out on my light, so I think now is a good time to finish. So I hope you've enjoyed that, I hope it's been useful and informative, and I hope you have a great day. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.